On today's photo moment, we're gonna check out the magic of making green screens and blue screens appear out of nowhere. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photojoseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking about all kinds of fun things, photo, video, live streaming related. And today we're talking about green or blue screen tech. Check out this beautiful blue screen. And you go, you know what? I don't want blue. Eh, maybe I want green today. It's like that. Or you just go, you know, I just don't, I don't want anything there. And it goes away. This is some crazy cool tech here. And now I know this isn't like super crazy new and like the title's like, you know, from the future. But it, if you're not used to this, this is totally from the future. I'm sure there's people watching this like, yeah, I know this tech's been around for, but I thought it was super cool from the future. So I wanted to show it to you. I saw it at NAB this year. I've seen it before, but this is the first time I really, really dug into it. I was super excited about it. So I reached out to the folks at Reflect Media, the company that makes it, and they referred me to DVE Store, who have uh, very gracefully sent us this product for use today and uh, for me to tell you all about it. So here's the basic summary of it. This is what we've got. You've got a, an LED light, right? Starts off with a light. So there's, let me just bring up the light there. There's the light. It is a ring of lights over the camera and it can switch colors. They're green, blue. And that is my camera. That is the camera that you're looking at right here now. That's that camera, and there's a ring of lights around it, shining LEDs straight at me, hitting this backdrop. Now, this backdrop is what makes this so special. This is not just gray fabric. This is actually millions and millions of tiny little kind of satellite dish, if you will, mirrors that are embedded into the fabric. And I, I got out my biggest macro lens to try to see if I could see them. All I could see was basically it looked like dirty sandpaper. It's You can't see them. They are microscopic for all intents and purposes. And those little satellite dishes reflect the light straight back at the camera. So here, let me show you this. If we switch over to here, you'll see this is the PDF that you can download. And I put a link down to this uh, in the description below as well. You can see here, this is what it is. Between the, the threads, there are these tiny little half circle, um, concave, little tiny mirrors. And this is what's shining the light back. And if you, I'm not going to go through this whole thing, but if you want to download this PDF, if you're really interested in this tech, they have some samples in here of illuminance measurement side by side with a, uh, the product that we're using, the chroma, uh, the chroma that we're using here on the left, and then a standard green screen on the right. So there's some really good, interesting tech in there about that. You might want to check that out. So this whole thing, what it's called, is it comes from a company called Reflect Media. And the bundle that we're actually working with today is called the Chromat Wide Shot Studio Bundle. The technology itself is, I'm going to write all this down here, is Reflect Media Chroma Key Solution. That's, the, that's what you're looking for. Um, so, and it comes in different bundles. We'll get to all those in a moment here. But again, essentially, you've got the lights, this background right here, and then the remote control to control it all. So this is the remote control. Let's get a, a close-up look on this. So this box right here controls the lights, two cables running into it. One of these goes to the LED lights themselves. The other one goes to the power source. If you don't want to plug it into the wall, you can hook in a camera battery, so you can run it that way as well. And this thing, all this does is it has switched to go between the green and the blue. You might be able to see a slight color cast happening here because this is so reflective. My, my surface of my desk is reflective. Um, but essentially, you're not really seeing any difference in there. But if I switch over to, oh, and also in here, sorry, you have these buttons here that allow you to increase or decrease the intensity of it. So here, let's switch back over to the LED. And as I take the intensity down on this, you can see how that looks there. So it's just a case of taking the brightness up or down for the lights until you find the right value. So that begs the question, what is the right value? We can see here, I turned it way down right there. That's quite a lot dimmer than we started. And it's not, we don't have a full blue screen here, or let's go back to green. We don't have a full green screen here. It's not quite there. Okay, so I start bringing up the brightness. So I'm at 1% right now. This is as low as it goes. So I'll start bringing this up, bringing this up, and you can see very quickly this comes in. And you can go, okay, well, that's, that's pretty good right there, right? Well, I'm only at 37% value. And they say that for most uses, kind of 30 to 50% is probably all you need to go. But just to show you, if I keep cranking it up, the background doesn't really change that much. It might get super saturated, get to a point where it's oversaturated and it actually becomes harder to key. Um, plus you have more risk of getting reflections from the light on something else, right? So if I'm holding something somewhat reflective and you get the lights at full, full intensity and you don't need it, you might get some um, some reflection on there. So that's one of the things that you would want to watch out for. So the overall advantage, let me bring this brightness back down a little bit. The overall advantage of this thing is proximity to the subject 
and ease of setup. Now, if you've ever used green screen before, you know that you have to have your green screen really perfectly lit and you have to have your subject quite far away from the background. When I first set up my recording studio in this space, not this one here, but the one in the little room you guys remember from last year, when I first built it, I actually painted the back wall green for green screening. And what I didn't realize was that even though I could light it nicely, I was too close to it and I got all this spill coming over my shoulders. That's not a problem here. In fact, it works better when you're up close to it. So if I had had this in that room, I absolutely could have taken advantage of this and done green screening in there where I couldn't before. I know I did kind of did once for like a, for the Apple keynote thing, it, but it was pretty sketchy. It, and that was really hard to get looking even reasonable. This would have made that super, super easy. So there's one of the advantages is proximity. The other, again, ease of setup. I don't have to worry about perfectly lighting this. This material, look, it's, I can bunch this up. Let me take the brightness down just a little bit too bright on this. Bring this back down a bit. Um, I can bunch this up. I can, you know, fold it. I can make clothing out of it. I can do anything with this thing. And you've got this perfect key without having to worry about where the fabric falls. And the fact that you can wrinkle it up and it still works is pretty, pretty cool. I think it's pretty awesome. So, so that's how that whole thing works. So now how do you come up with the right brightness to it? Essentially what you want to do is back it down. Let's go back down so it's clearly not bright enough. And I'm, I'm looking at a preview monitor here. That's why I'm looking down. And I'll bring it up. And you keep kind of bring it up. You go, okay, looks good. Bring up a little bit more. Bring little, and you get to a point where you go, the more I bring it up, I'm not really seeing a difference. Then maybe back off a little bit. Yep, there, there's a difference. Back up a little bit. Essentially you want it as low as possible to still get the whole effect. Um, you don't want to have, again, over, over brightness on there because it might get reflections off of something else. And the reason that you have the ability to go so far with it, to go so much higher than you would seem to need, is distance, right? If I want to put the light of the camera farther away with the light on it, then obviously I'm going to need a little bit brighter light to do that. At an AB, they had it set up with, I'm going to guess, a 30-foot distance from the camera to the subject. And maybe it was even more than that. It was a pretty good stretch. It was, uh, it was impressive to see how that whole thing worked. So when you're setting this up, one of the things you got to watch out for is shadows. So as I'm close against here, it's a really nice, clean key, right? Watch my hand. See the shadow? It's, it's, it's the opposite of a shadow. It's a halo shadow. A shadow you would expect to be when I'm closer here, right? But the closer I get, there is no shadow. The farther away I get, there is. It's some weird refraction thing of the light wrapping around the subject and back. It's like, it's science. I don't know. But it's, that's what happens. So you have to watch out for that, which is why you generally want to be closer. And if you can't be closer, there are ways to work around it. And we're going to look at that in, uh, in another part of the demo. So incidentally, I know I didn't say this at the beginning, but today's show is a three-part show. First, we're talking about this tech itself. And then we're going to look at how to get a good, uh, good key off of your ATEM switcher and then how to get a good key off of Final Cut. So that's, that's the progression of this. So, um, so this is set up. So let's, uh, let's just throw a key on there. So I've already, this is green already. I've already got this dialed in. So all I got to do is hit one shortcut and, and there we go. You know, and at this point you're like, I do the show from the forest. That's pretty cool. And this is just a still picture. So I've just loaded a still frame off of the ATEM that's loaded behind me here. You can see the key is pretty good. You know, it's this, is, and this is the ATEM, which is not the greatest keyer in the world. Um, hardware real-time keying, not too shabby. And then, of course, you know, this is the cool one, like, go to the beach. In fact, let's bring up some sound on there. Where's my pina colada? That's all I want to know. This is pretty cool, right? Okay, yeah, I'm done. This is it. I'm, I'm going home for the day. Um, this is great. I love it. So this is, this is all there is to it. You get the, the material set up, it comes in a variety of sizes. Attach the light to the camera. There's a little ring on there. That is a, I forget the size now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably get this wrong, but I'm going to say a 72 millimeter ring, and there's a larger one as well for larger lenses. And you basically just take standard step filter rings and put it on there so you can attach it to any size. And you'll see if you watch all three of today's shows that we are going to move it to different lenses as well and just use different step rings. So um, again, quick shout out to the DVE store. These are the guys who are making today possible. They're the ones who have shipped out the gear for us to use. And of course, everybody wants to know how to get this and how much it costs. So let's bring this up. This is the little tech sheet, little pricing sheet that came out of NAB. Now, this is not a cheap solution. I will tell you that right up front. This is not a bargain basement solution. Uh, the desktop shooting bundle, the smallest one, starts at $1,900. The, what I'm working with here, this wide shot studio setup is $2,300. And you can get bigger ones. There's a pop-up one. So if you want to do like a um, you know, little pop-up, they have a whole green pop-up thing, so you don't have to hang it. That's pretty cool. 
And, uh, and then you can have custom size duns as well, which is really neat. So you can, they'll sew it, what does it say, uh, $38 a square foot, so you can get it to any size pretty much that you need. So if you are interested in this, you wanna check this out, do go to dvestore.com slash reflectmedia. That is where you'll find all the information you need about it. That is where you'll learn um, Let's do the, here, I'm going to do this. Let's do, there we go. We'll put that up in the background. Um, that's where you'll get all the specs on it. If you want more information, all the pricing, of course, and uh, if you're going to buy it, you can buy from them. And they also do rentals as well. This is actually one of their rental kits. So you don't have to um, spend all the money if you only need it for a short-term thing. Uh, one of the videos that I saw on their website that was really cool is they set this up in a bus. You know, imagine if you're doing, you're on tour and you're doing interviews on the road, on the go. You don't have, try to do a green screen in a hotel room or in a vehicle or something. You can do that in here with this. That is, that is really, really cool stuff. So I'm super impressed with what it is. Um, it definitely is, a, is, is an advance in my mind over what green screen technology is. Or, of course, if you want to go blue screen, let's go back to that. Green screen or blue screen, the flip of a switch. Let's bring that back up a little bit. Super cool stuff. Okay, so that is the basics. That is everything. We Yep, I got everything lined up there. So... Next, we're going to take a short break and we're going to come back for part two of the show. Part two of the show is going to be how to get a good key using a Blackmagic ATEM. And if you're not using the Blackmagic ATEM, then you'll want to go to part three of the video, which is doing the key using Final Cut. And in, in that one, we're actually going to talk a little bit about how to um, avoid the shadowing if you have subjects farther away from your backdrop. So stick around. We'll be back in just a minute. 